Hello there, we are broadcasting from Hollywood in Mongolia event and today I have uh, Mr. Matthew White, he is one of writers of Marco Polo. So hello Mr. Matthew. Hello. Thank, thank you, you for accepting my request to have an interview. Of course, thank you for having me here. It's and great also to be back. thank you for uh, being here in Mongolia. I love Mongolia, I was here about five years ago. Uh, I spent two weeks and it was a wonderful, wonderful time mm -hmm. and so when I was invited to mm -hmm. attend this, uh, I jumped at the occasion. It's mm -hmm. great to be back. Uh, what was the purpose of your previous visit here in Mongolia? Yes, I was a writer on the Netflix TV series Marco Polo, mm -hmm. and I read many, many books about Mongolia and the history, and I met people. I met Amra, who was an actor on Marco Polo, became friends with him, mm -hmm. a guy Biamba who was our Mongolian advisor on the show, became friends with him, mm -hmm. and realized that there's only so much you can learn from a book mm -hmm. about a, a place or a thing or even a person, and that I actually needed to go to Mongolia to experience it for myself. Mm -hmm. And so they invited me over, and mm -hmm. Orgil, also I met Orgil, mm -hmm. and he invited me, and it, they gave me a grand tour of Mongolia for two weeks, mm -hmm. and I learned so much. I actually got to breathe the Mongolian air, <laughs> see the beautiful Mongolian horses, mm -hmm. drink the irag, mm -hmm. uh, sleep in a gear mm. multiple times, <laughs> multiple ride a horse. Times. It was a wonderful trip. Yeah. How long was the uh, distance between ex expectation from book and your visit here in Mongolia? Wow. Uh, I read the books probably about a year before I came to Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I thought that I was an expert, and when I, which is a stupid thing to think. And when I got here, I realized, holy cow, like Mongolia, well, technically the books weren't wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, it is just a place you need to experience in person. Mm -hmm. uh, the people are so beautiful and so talented, mm -hmm. as we saw in our opening ceremonies today. Mm -hmm. There's so much talent in this country. Mm -hmm. And I saw some of that also on display when I visited mm -hmm. five years ago. And so I was able to return to Hollywood. Uh, and in the writer's room, I had so many ideas uh, for the things that we could show uh, for the court of Kublai Khan, mm -hmm. all the many different artists and dancers and contortionists and mm -hmm. musicians and everything that, that he had in his court. Mm -hmm. I saw some of that here in Mongolia and mm -hmm. so that influenced and inspired me. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting that why you wanted to, to write about the Marco Polo film? I have always loved history, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly American history. I, was, I knew more about American history. Uh, and. I spent some time in Asia after college, and I fell in love with Japan, uh, did some traveling over there. Mm -hmm. And so when the opportunity to work on Marco Polo presented itself, I didn't know the true story. Mm -hmm. I always I knew the myth. You know, Marco Polo yeah. went to China, brought spaghetti back, you know, invented spaghetti, whatever. <laughs> uh, and so this show was a collision of both things that I, that I really loved, history and Asia and realized once I started doing the research like oh my gosh why has this story not been told before at least in a, to an American audience this is an incredible unbelievable story mm -hmm. and so it was a real dream to be a part of that and all my friends when I got the job were like I can't believe this is your dream show this show is perfect for you how did how did this you know enter your life mm -hmm. and I think maybe it was a little bit of, of fate mm -hmm. actually Mm -hmm. When I introduced you, I said you are the one of writers of Marco yes. Polo. How many actually writers in there? Uh, there was about six. It mm -hmm. changed per season. There was mm -hmm. a slightly different number, but mm -hmm. on average there was about six of us. There was John Fusco who created the show. Uh, he was our head writer. And then mm -hmm. he also had a couple other writers, uh, Patrick McManus and Liz Sarnoff. Uh, and I got Dave Erickson on season one who were kind of like co head writers with him, mm -hmm. and then there were a few writers, myself included, underneath, mm -hmm. who uh, would, we all worked as a team. Mm -hmm. And John, even though he was the boss, mm -hmm. was very open to ideas from everyone. And uh, I love John, he's a hero <laughs> of mine, so it was just a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. And 
I'm so sad that <laughs> I don't get mm -hmm. to work on that show anymore. <laughs> I would write 20 seasons of that show. Mm -hmm. I loved it so much. And actually, six is a big number to be a writer. Six writers is a big number. And I think it's really interesting for our viewers to know about how actually the series are working. Yeah. That you are six of us brainstorming on a series, uh, season one. Yeah. And, and then season one is ending. And then uh, six of us again brainstorming on season two. It's like that? Uh, more or less, yes. <laughs> uh, season one it was actually a little smaller. It was only five, uh, uh -huh. five people. Uh, but basically, it's almost like a band. You're putting a uh -huh. band together, uh -huh. and each person has a different instrument in mm -hmm. the band. Someone plays a guitar, someone plays the, yeah, the drums, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And so in a writer's room for TV, it's like that as well. Uh, mm -hmm. One person, there's the creator of the show, and he puts together his band, mm -hmm. the people that he wants on his team to help him. Uh -huh. He's the lead singer. Mm -hmm. he, John Fusco's the lead <laughs> okay. singer, you know? Uh, I think I got hired because I have a passion for history uh -huh. and I love research and I do my homework and I love meeting people and I was actually the only writer on that show aside from John Fusco who had been to Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So I think my passion for the material uh, was the role that I played in mm -hmm. the band. Mm -hmm. There was another writer who was funny, just so crazy, so funny, my brain could never operate the way that her brain operates, mm. but she had such a unique sense of humor mm -hmm. that that was her gift that she brought to the writer, mm -hmm. the writer's table. Uh, there was another woman who had so much experience working mm -hmm. on so many wonderful shows. She brought that experience. She was also good at structuring the story in an order, figuring out the best sequence of the mm -hmm. plot to get mm -hmm. the most emotional experience mm -hmm. for the viewer. And that was her superpower that she brought to the mm, table. So we all okay. brought different yes. talents and mm -hmm. powers to the mm -hmm. table. And how do you th think about a social media? There are a lot of, but for example, today we had the one episode, and then everyone is writing down yes. their posts, their opinions. Yes. And yes. how do you think about these opinions? It is a bit of a double-edged sword, <laughs> because on one hand, it is good to know what the viewer is thinking. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, everyone thinks that they're an expert. Mm -hmm. And some of the critics can be very mean. Uh -huh. uh, too mean, really. <laughs> as an artist, you need to have a thick skin. Mm -hmm. As an actor, as a writer, as a director, you now can get bullied on social media if people don't like your, your art that mm -hmm. you're creating. And that has never happened before. If you don't like it, switch the channel or mm -hmm. don't watch. Mm -hmm. But now people get attacked. Yeah. And so that part is not so good. However, there can be benefits to knowing what the world and what the audience is responding to. Uh, for example, in season one of Marco Polo, we had Amra, mm -hmm. the Mongolian actor. Mm -hmm. And Amra, we didn't, we didn't know Amra. You know, we, we met him through the show and mm -hmm. he showed up and was incredible. Mm -hmm. He just brought this like, Mongol, you know, authentic, yeah. you know, Mongol energy and killed it, did an amazing job and mm -hmm. everyone loved him. He was such a great part of the show, but he dies in episode two, yes. you know, and had we known, you know, we probably would have made the story a little bit differently, but mm. that's how, how things went. Uh, but Amra went to the Marco Polo premiere in New York with his wife, and they were dressed in the traditional Miguel. Mongolian. Yeah, 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 the white, and walked the red carpet, and <laughs> posted all the pictures with that look that he gives. And uh, that photograph was tweeted and retweeted many, many times. So many times that when we were writing Marco Polo's season two, mm -hmm. Netflix came into our writer's room, they wanted oh. a meeting, mm -hmm. and they asked us, they said, hey, this photo of Am Amra got tweeted so many times, more than any other tweet or any other photograph that we used to, to uh -huh. mm -hmm. publicize this show, is there any way you can write him back yeah, into the show? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They wanted us to write him back in, which would have been a dream for all of us, but unfortunately, we, uh, we already had 
it was late in the process, and we kind of knew what season two was mm -hmm. going to be, and so we couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But here's a little spoiler that you might not know. Uh, we wrote Marco Polo season three. Mm -hmm. It never got made. It never mm -hmm. got filmed, but oh. we wrote it. Okay. <laughs> and it is great. Uh -huh. It is a great season. It was going to be even better. Mm -hmm. It was a show that was, that was getting better, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And we were able to, this is a secret, we okay. were able to put Amra back, not for the whole hey, show, really? but he, yeah, there's, oh a, there's a surprise appearance. Uh, yes, that's surprising. So, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you very much for reborning him. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know, I know. <laughs> okay, and uh, our interview is going to the end, so I hope okay. that the continue, uh, the filming of the Marco Polo can continue on our land in the Mongolian countryside or Mongolian country. Well, here is uh, some information as well. Marco Polo, I don't know all the details, but it is owned by what was the Weinstein Company, which is now... Okay. Doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, it was bought by another group. I think their name was Lantern. Mm -hmm. So they ho hold the rights to Marco Polo. So there is season three written in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> that this new company owns, mm -hmm. maybe if some, you know, people in Mongolia put together the money and find the money, they can buy those scripts oh, and they okay. can buy the rights to the show mm -hmm. and maybe we can make the show. Yeah, Season that's great news too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you are surprising me for yeah, right. years. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much again for coming here in Mongolia and accepting my request too. Of course. Thank you, Thank for you very much. Me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.